Let's talk about making a really simple open face plaster silica mold for glass casting. So let's talk about safety stuff. Um, we're going to be using uh, plaster and silica, both of which are materials you should not breathe. So the first thing is I've got a dust mask on, N95, NIOSH approved dust mask. They're really hard to come by during the pandemic. So um, you can though pretty easily get one of those big respirators. Usually when I'm making molds, I'm making one of those big respirators with the filters on them. Um, we still also have a ventilation system here. So it's pretty simple. The power has to be on, otherwise it won't work. And then we're just gonna turn it to say hand. So turn it to the left. You should hear the ventilation start up and you should hear this other strange sound of uh, the vent opening. This is where our ventilation is. This has to be open for the ventilation to work. If this is closed, the ventilation is not doing anything. You can hear the sound change. So it's open and it's sucking a good bit of air through. That's what we want. And we're gonna only mix and work with things that we're mixing right down here. Whenever we're done, if we don't wanna suck all the heat out of the building, turn it off. And you should hear the vent up there closing. And then we're done. Um, if you're making a lot of molds, I usually have mold making clothes. I take them off as soon as I can, put them in a bag and take them home and directly out of that and wash them. You don't want to breathe silica in. It doesn't ever leave your lungs. So um, just being as care cautious as possible, I want to be able to be doing this when I'm 70. So. Um, don't, don't be casual about it. So we have this object here that we're going to put plaster and silica around. Um, the first thing that we've done is make a little patty of clay that we're going to use as a pour cup. You want to rest that on there? My hands are dirty. Hopefully try to rest it so that there's some sticking around each edge. So what that's going to do is create a little reservoir, um, a little extra space for um, the glass to sit in. If, I, if this was a really shallow thing, I might make it a thicker reservoir, but I'm just going to cut around it now so that it's a really um, simple shape. Can you, uh, when I'm done with this, push this down in here, uh, can I? When I'm, I'm going to... Um, mark this, you're going to pick it up and then we're going to cut it and then you're going to put it back and smush it down so that none of the plaster gets underneath it, okay? I'm going to pick it up. So, as I'm cutting this, I'm trying to cut it at a slight angle to make a tapered pour cup. This acts a, we're calling this a pour cup because we're borrowing terminology from metal casting. But it's basically just a reservoir that any extra glass we need will sit in. So that's all ready to go. What we're going to do now is mix up our plaster and silica and let it sit for three minutes. And then we'll come back and uh, show you how to mix that together. So we've got two buckets here. I always have one marked dry and one marked wet. That way I'm not um, getting two buckets dirty. So the first thing I'm going to do is zero out my buckets. Buckets have weight. So if I put them on the scale first, it should read at zero. Um, but you can see when I take the bucket off, it weighs 0.6 pounds. Um, if I was to put the bucket on here after I turned it on, the bucket will say 0.6 pounds and then I'll press this button that says zero or hold. Sometimes it's also called tear, T-A-R-E, which just means, see it says tear there, it just means to zero out the scale. So now when I go and I dump uh, material in there, I'm getting a fresh measurement. I don't have to do any math in my head. Our mold making mix is really, really simple. 
it is one part water, one part plaster, one part silica by weight. You can also do by volume. Doesn't really matter that much. You will get a slightly different mixture that way because silica weighs more than plaster, but it's effective and it'll work. So either by weight or by volume, we do by weight because it's more predictable. You can do exactly the same thing every time. So if you're getting good results, you can keep getting good results. If you do it by volume, it depends on how much is compressed down. So that can change that mold. I'm gonna start by just uh, putting in water into my wet one, my wet bucket. And I think I'm just gonna sort of estimate that that's gonna maybe say two pounds of, of water and then two pounds of each of the other materials and it'll be good. You wanna use cold water when you're doing this? If you use hot water, it will speed up the process of, um, if you get a little bit too much uh, water in your bucket, you can just take a sponge and suck some of it out. If you use hot water, like I was saying, you'll speed up the process of the plaster curing too much, and then it shortens your working time with the plaster. All right, so I got two pounds of water. If I got the same exact bucket, it should read the same, zero up. Now I'm gonna add two pounds of plaster and two pounds of paper. I am not adding them to the wet bucket yet. I'm adding them first to a separate dry bucket. That's because there's no way to take it back out if you measure wrong. So now that I've got my plaster and silica together, I'm gonna mix them dry. And then I'm just gonna dump them in. My water. And then I'm going to wait for three minutes exactly for that plaster and silica to soak up the water. It takes three minutes for it to slick and saturate, and then I can start mixing it. So we'll see you in three minutes. Okay, so the next thing we're doing in preparation for uh, making the mold is coating this with some mold that we spray. This is universal mold release, made for this purpose, but you can actually use like lemon pledge or something, or just silicone lubricant. This is mostly silicone. <laughs> so a silicone uh, and pledge contain silicone, it's what makes it shiny and slippery. So you could spray that with that. That just helps it release from the plaster when we're done. So while that's drying, I am going to mix up my plaster and silica. So take a look in here and you'll see that I almost finished absorbing. I'll push around the dry stuff and let it finish. You can kind of see over here, the water is creeping in and slowly saturating all the final parts of the dry stuff. After three minutes, that's what it should look like. You should be able to watch it fully. Um, I'm gonna stick your head in here and see. Yeah. So you see just a little bit of dry, the last little bit of it going away. Right. So it's very different than the way you mix plaster for um, making a mold for like say sculpture or something where you're sifting it in. We don't want any of that plaster to start setting before the rest of it. So we dump it all in at one time. So it all comes in contact with the water at once. So when we mix it, it's very homogenous mold material. As soon as plaster starts uh, coming in contact with water, it is going to start setting up. So you can have this situation where you're sifting and the stuff on the bottom is already setting and the stuff on the in your hands does not yet even touch the water. So now I'm just gonna mix. You wanna mix for about another two minutes. Um, if you're really particular, you can set a timer. Really, really good mixing and letting it slick and absorb water is the key to making a nice, strong, homogenous mold. So we're pretty close to being done mixing. It's been about two minutes of mixing by hand, making sure it's all mixed up. 
I am now going to take a brush and brush on plaster silica into all the crevices of this. My goal is really to catch the detail. This is in, uh, this is basically what you would use in sculpture, what you call in sculpture a face coat. I'm not so much brushing as I'm pushing gently with the tip of the brush to make sure that the plaster silica mixture goes into all the little crevices and I'm not catching any bubbles. That's my goal here, no bubbles. I have to work quickly because as I'm working, the plaster silica that's in the bucket is setting up. And there's gonna be a moment when it's the perfect consistency for me to put it on. So I'm not dawdling, I'm not being like super in over attentive about this. I'm just trying to get it into all the little grooves and stuff. If you have a big enough object, you'd need two people doing this or three people with brushes making sure that that face coat gets on there and that there's no bubbles being trapped. Back in the day, and people might still do this when they do sculpture uh, plaster molds, they do what they call a flick coat where they literally flick it at the model. That's so that the plaster is driven into all the details um, because of the pressure of flicking it at the surface. We don't do that because we don't want a giant messy plaster room. <laughs> it creates a giant mess. And this works just as well. Almost done. If I had a pattern that didn't have very, very much detail, I could just put the mold material on it, but this is not like that. So making sure if I've got time and my mold material is not set up, I'm going to go over the entire thing again, making sure that I haven't missed any spots and I'm pushing to push out any, pop any bubbles that might be underneath there. I'm not really trying to get too much material on here because as I'm putting the material on, if it's too liquid, if it's liquid enough to do this part, it's so liquid that it will flow back off. But here in a minute, this plaster will be thick enough that I can apply it to a vertical surface and it won't drain off very easily. Um, the plaster will become Thixotropic, which means that it becomes liquid when you agitate it. And that's kind of how plaster has been, has been used for centuries to like plaster walls. You take some plaster and you go and put it on a wall and it stays. It's liquid as you're moving it. And as soon as you stop moving it, it becomes relatively solid. So that's the moment that we're waiting for, for our mold material, because what we don't necessarily want is a giant puddle of mold material that we got to keep lifting up. So once I've got a good coating on, I'm gonna clean my brush and wait for my plus, the rest of my material to set up enough. It's almost there, not quite. Clean my brush. All right, so now let's check out our mold material. So look at this. If I put my finger through it, it almost stays. That's real close to being ready. It seems <laughs> more solid than you think, but we're, we're not quite there. If I put that on, it'll still drain down pretty, pretty fast. So I'm gonna wait just a few more seconds. It should be that when I push my finger through it, come a look, come a look. 
when I push my finger through it in there, it leaves that peak. That's about the time that I can start adding it to the surface. I don't want to go any sooner than this because it'll just drain down. So you can see that I can get the material to flow by just vibrating it with my hand a little bit. I'll demonstrate that right over here. So I get this giant amount of material, put it on here, and I can control where it flows by just agitating it. And if I let it flow from the top down, I should prevent air bubbles. The goal of making one of these molds is to try to make it as even as possible. A hand-built mold will last better in the kiln than a poured mold because ideally a hand-built mold is more even. It's more of an even shell. If you pour a mold, normally something has to hold the walls of the material while you're pouring it. So something like this, there'd be no way to get an even, uh, keep uncovering that. There'd be no way to get an even coating of this because it's not an even form. So my goal is to completely coat this thing in an even shell. That way, as it's curing in the firing process, it'll cure it evenly. Plaster has a lot of water in it. As it dries, when it's curing, it shrinks. As it loses water from the dry material. And if it shrinks unevenly, it'll crack. So the goal is make the mold as even in its walls as possible so that when you dry it, it shrinks evenly and doesn't crack. So you can see even at this stage I'm able to agitate the mold material and flow it uphill. And I don't have a giant puddle. I'm probably going to put one more layer over this. So I'm not going to smooth this out too much. I'm actually going to give it some texture right before I'm done. So that the next layer kind of grabs onto it pretty easily. Clean my bucket immediately and then mix more material immediately and add another layer. Once I'm done with both layers or three layers if I need to, my goal is a two and a half inch thick shell of plaster and silica around the object. And then I let it cure for 30 minutes at least without moving it. And when it's finished curing for 30 minutes, then I can flip it over take it off the substrate and take the clay out. If I'm using water-based clay, which there's a water-based clay base on this, I don't wanna wait until that water-based clay is dried out, so I cannot wait overnight. Otherwise, that water-based clay will dry out and the plaster will suck the water out of it and dry it out faster. It'll dry out and be really difficult to remove. So I almost always am removing my clay pattern from my open face molds immediately after the plaster is set. Again about a half an hour to 45 minutes, and then I can remove it. 